wanted to formally welcome everyone to Star Diamond's live event today, hosted by Six. I'm pleased to introduce their speakers for today. We've got Ewan Mason, interim CEO and chair, and George Reed, senior VP of corporate development. Uh, in this webinar, designed for both newcomers to the Star Diamond story and longtime followers, I'll be discussing the work done in 2023 and a view into what investors can expect in 2024. Uh, there will be a live Q&A following the presentation, but you can submit your questions in the chat on the right-hand side of your screen at any point during the conversation. Uh, and as always, the summit is being recorded and will be available on Six.com to watch afterwards, as well as on YouTube. Uh, without further ado, I'll hand it over to George and Ewan to get started. Uh, thanks, Romeo. Uh, first slide, please. Uh, there we go. As uh, Romeo has mentioned, uh, the intent today is to just give you a summary of what transpired in uh, 2023, if you're new to the story, and to give you a bit of a look forward as to what we're expecting to do uh, in the new year coming up. Uh, next slide. This is all the normal gobbledygook that we have to give. If you haven't seen it before, <clears throat> you can read it afterwards. Next slide. <clears throat> okay, so just to recap, uh, obviously, the big news of the year is we have agreed to take back the 75% interest in the Falcon project uh, that Rio Tinto owns, such that we will now own 100% of the project when it closes. And it's, it's, it's worthy of note that we have never before owned 100% of this project. We've always had a partner in it, so this is a first. Uh, in addition to getting the project back, we're going to get Canadian $4 million, uh, from Rio to help with the costs uh, of the transaction going forward. In addition to that, we'll be providing a $10 million uh, environmental bond in the form of letter of credit uh, to the government of Saskatchewan to help uh, cover future reclamation costs. Uh, in addition to that, we also got the bulk sample plant, uh, which is a major give on Rio's part. It's almost brand new and it's in great shape. We have a video that we're gonna show you uh, early in the new year about what kind of shape it's in and you'll be you'll be surprised I think the trench cutter also is in great shape it's brand new uh, this is a, actually we've had quite a bit of interest in this piece of machinery from mining companies in Saskatchewan that want to rent it so uh, this could be another source of revenue uh, going forward uh, in in totality the, the that machinery that we got from from Rio as part of this deal is likely uh, worth well over a hundred million dollars next slide George. So Ewan has mentioned this transaction, which uh, we're very pleased with the result of the transaction. There's a bit of paperwork to do to get the claims moved over, the mining leases, uh, all of our permission to operate, and uh, that is well underway. Um, I must remind you that uh, the very large contiguous claim block that you see on that uh, map, which is some... Um, 60 kilometers east of the city of Prince Albert in uh, central Saskatchewan, the Saskatchewan River, flowing through the southern part of the project. And uh, very extensive claims, the Kimberlites marked in red, and the two Kimberlites that have been extensively evaluated, namely Star and Orion South, are indicated in blue. So they're in the southeastern part of the Fort Alacorn Kimberlite. So we refer to the Kimberlites collectively as the Fort Alacorn, and then there are individual names for certain of the bodies, and we'll talk more about that as we go through the presentation. There's over 60 additional bodies, most of which contain diamonds, and ideally the project is only 20 kilometers off paved highway and the Saskatchewan power grid, which provides an enormous opportunity for future development of this project. There is access to a local pool of skilled labor. And um, we can go to the next slide. Um, we have done a huge amount of work over a long period. We have gathered very valuable information. Um, as you see in that chart at the bottom of that slide, there was work completed between 1996 and 2000. And uh, 22, which included core drilling to define the shape, size, internal structure of the kimberlite, large diameter drilling to determine diamond grade, both across the body and in a vertical sense through the kimberlite. 
underground bulk sampling was very important in order to obtain a very large parcel of plus one millimeter diamonds so that we could determine a reasonably accurate run of mine value on the diamonds. Um, we did that very successfully on STAR and to a lesser degree on the um, Orion South Kimberlite. That work on the underground on Orion South was curtailed by the world financial crisis. That information has then been assimilated, built into a geological model, and in the latter part of Rio Tinto's um, work on the project, they very successfully... George, can I just stop you there for a minute? I'm getting quite a few emails that no one can hear you. I don't know why I can hear you. Romeo, any idea? Um, George, could you can mind? You, just, can uh, you hear me? I'm using a microphone, which is on my desk in front of me. Can you go ahead to the um, more options uh, ticker at the bottom of your screen? And just make sure you change your role to a speaker. Oh, yes. Uh, Speaker. Yes, it's, it was marked as speaker. Can everybody hear me? I hope that it's still working. Is there Are there any people out there that can't hear me? Well, I got five emails. People can't hear you. <laughs> I'm just checking with the chat. Are you guys able to hear George now? Still no. Uh, George, maybe if you want to just reset the page. Apologies, everybody, for this quick technical difficulty. Uh, but if you want to just reset the page and re-enter as a speaker, George, uh, let's we'll see if people can see you. Like, go right out of the talk and come back in again? If you don't mind, yeah. Well, this could be problematic. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. We can hear George, but uh, we're just going to try and uh, get him back in and get restarted. Just a couple seconds. Thanks for letting us know, and apologies for these technical difficulties. Pros in the chat, thanks for bearing with us. We could hear him, so it's a little, uh, little disorienting. Just a couple seconds while he refreshes the page. How about that now? Are there any people out there that can't hear me? I hope it works. Uh, George is back. Can you guys hear him now, hear and see him? Perfect. OK, thanks, chat, and sorry for that. Sorry for uh, the interruption. Any we're going to go ahead and uh, start over. Appreciate you guys hanging in with us for a few minutes. Shall we, shall we jump back to the beginning of the technical part? I think that might be shrewd, yeah. And, and you and you were heard in, in, in by the whole crowd, I presume. Everybody could hear you, and yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's go back to the appropriate slide. Thank you. Let's get started again. So we are very pleased with the transaction that has taken place between Star Diamond Corporation and Rio Tinto Exploration Canada, whereby we will ultimately obtain 100% interest in this shown in yellow on the map, contiguous block of claims. Kimberlites are shown in red, and most of those, more than 60 bodies, contain diamonds. The two marked in blue at the southeast end, namely the Rhine South and the Star Kimberlite, have been evaluated to an extensive degree. And um, the ideal part of this project is you can see faintly on that map the red lines are paved highways. We are only 20 kilometers off paved roads. And more importantly, we are only 20 kilometers off the Saskatchewan power grid, which will add a huge advantage to us in the future for serious electrical power use on the project and vastly 
reducing our carbon footprint. So we have also an access to skilled labor in the area. Many people that live in this area have both worked on the uranium mines in the north, the potash mines in the south, and oil and gas projects in eastern Alberta, as well as in Saskatchewan. We can go to the next slide. Um, in terms of the way forward on Star and Orion South, uh, we've actively worked towards reducing the diamond price estimate on Orion South. There'll be more about that in a moment. Um, and most importantly, this work aims to eliminate the requirement for additional bulk sampling on Orion South. Orion South has had fewer bulk samples taken than Star, but we believe we can infer the price on Orion South uh, and very, uh, in a very well constrained way. STAR aims to publish a revised mineral resource estimate on STAR and Orion South. The trench cutter diamond results will be integrated into that resource estimate. Most importantly in the trench cutter work, because it was using a very modern sampling technique and more specifically because the uh, process, the bulk sample plant, which Ewan has already alluded to, is a, a modern plant with a state-of-the-art uh, flow sheet. Most importantly, it has a high-pressure grinding roll system, which ensures very good liberation of small diamonds. It also has a, a dense media separator that recovers those small diamonds in a very narrow size range, namely one to six millimeters, resulting in an extremely efficient dense media separation recovery of the smalls. The smalls on Star and Orion South are extremely important because normally these diamonds, which on some projects are even sent to waste, they are diamonds greater than one millimeter, but still very small size fractions. However, on Star and Orion South, these diamonds have an average dollar per carat price of between uh, $30 and $50 a carat, whereas normally these small stones would be $5 to $10 a carat. So there is significant value in these stones. They are very well shaped octahedra with extremely white colors. So as I've said in the past, we have done extensive work, uh, has been completed, core drilling, large diameter drilling, underground bulk sampling, which makes us understand the kimberlite in terms of its size, shape, and internal structure. There are a number of kimberlite units with different grades within the body, and we have to map those very accurately. Uh, we need to know the diamond grade, how it varies across the kimberlite, both in a horizontal and a vertical sense. We also needed to conduct the underground bulk sample in order to extract a large volume of kimberlite. We did 75,000 tons on, a, on star, from which we recovered a set, over 11,000 carats. Gives us a very good idea of what a run of mine price will be for uh, the star kimberlite. We then translated that work onto Orion South. That work was unfortunately curtailed by the World Cup financial crisis, and we collected a smaller parcel of only some 2,500 carats. However, we believe we have found a plan where we can estimate the price on Orion South with accuracy and without the necessity of additional bulk sampling. So we want to then integrate all our current information, including the trench cutter diamond results into a new geological model. And from that, we will develop a revised mineral resource estimate, which will then provide the baseline for the development of a pre-feasibility study, moving into a feasibility study, which gives us tons, grades, carats, a reserve estimate, a mine plan, capital costs, economic model, and mine life with NPV and IRR. Next slide, please. 
If we look at Star and Orion South at the southeast end of that chain of kimberlites, we see that they are in very close proximity. And in our uh, preliminary economic assessment, which was done in 2018, we designed the pits on Orion South and Star, and we can see that those pit boundaries will be only 750 meters apart. And so we know that these kimberlites are buried underneath a significant amount of overburden, namely about 130 meters on star, but shallower overburden at 100 meters on Orion South. There is a significant cash flow advantage, therefore, to commence mining on Orion South. You get into higher grade kimberlite in close proximity to the overlying glacial till at 100 meters and you generate cash very quickly to pay back your significant capital costs and we estimate that can happen in about three and a half years. We need to, in order to put all our money where our mouth is in, uh, in mining Orion South first, we need to get a slightly better control on the, on the Orion South price, and we are very actively working at that at the moment. We are doing a very detailed quality sort of the diamonds. Frequently, kimberlites that are even erupted adjacent to each other, as in the case of a star and Orion, have vastly different diamond populations. However, our work to date has shown that both Star and Orion have uncannily similar uh, diamond populations. We are getting close to the end of this work, and we hope that we will be able to use Star to augment the value of Orion South because of its greater and larger sample that was taken. As, as I've said on that slide, there are surprising similarities between Star both in the and Orion South, both in geology and in the nature of the diamond parcels. Next slide, please. Um, we recently put out a news release which highlighted um, Orion North, and there are significant future opportunities on Orion North. The most significant being that there is a vast volume, uh, more than 100, uh, 500 million tons of diamond-bearing kimberlite within Orion North. Um, not only that, it has a very coarse size frequency, particularly in the K148 and K120 parts of the body. And most surprisingly, it has a very anomalous uh, abundance of type 2A diamonds. Type 2A diamonds can result in extreme size and value and gin and tonic white goods, occasionally pink. And normally the, in a kimberlite, there are less than 2% of type 2As. However, in Orion North, we see over 52% of type 2A, which is a real surprise. And so this makes um, a great incentive for further evaluation work on Orion North and ideally the trench cutter that we have inherited from Rio Tinto as part of this deal is ideally suited to that work. So there is a great opportunity awaiting to happen at Orion North. Next slide, please. You and I think we're back to you. Thanks, George. Um, as um, you will have noted, we've launched a small uh, non-broker private placement uh, at the end of last week uh, because we really want to get going with this. Uh, we don't really have a good concept of how long uh, it's going to take to close this deal because the Ministry of Environment has asked for a number of supplementary submissions, and it could be 30 days, 60 days. I don't, I don't know. So uh, we want to get cracking on this. And so uh, basically... Um, I've given George instructions to bring people on and get and get cracking so he can tell you uh, definitively what we're going to use this $2 million for. 
The use of proceeds, uh, as you know, the, we would like to raise some flow-through units because the technical team at STAR can be funded by flow-through funds. Uh, the revised mineral resource estimate most certainly for STAR and Iran South. Um, that work has already commenced. We have a, our diamond sorter is uh, on site and active as we speak. Um, we have want to initiate the scoping of the engineering towards the feasibility study and initiate a study to minimize the carbon footprint of a future mine. And there is a lot of opportunity within Canadian universities to utilize people who are working towards this end. And not only can we uh, minimize the carbon footprint by using hydroelectrically generated power to power the mine, but we can also sequester uh, CO2 by, the, by crushed kimberlite. Crushed kimberlite is rich in olivine. Olivine reacts with uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to form a carbonate, and that process happens on a, on a very rapid scale. It's not on a geological scale. It happens very quickly once the Kimberlite is uh, exposed to, at, for, to the atmosphere on the surface. And we are already working with uh, teams of people that uh, will assist us in this process so that we can ultimately generate carbon credits from the project. Most importantly, we need to work with local indigenous groups to ensure their active participation in the project. And perhaps Ewan might want to add a few comments about that. Sure, thanks, George. Uh, we are actively looking to establish uh, an Indigenous advisory uh, group that will advise the board on the way forward here. We've had discussions with a number of individuals and indeed are looking uh, to add someone to the board that will help us um, navigate the way forward to, to making this a true partnership project. And I can't say too much about it right now because discussions are preliminary. Uh, but make no mistake, that's where we're going. Next slide. So we just remind ourselves of the of the the true nature of this project. We have a large, uh, the potential for a large long life mine. Um, we have shown we can mine 66 million carats over a 38 year mine life in the. PEA done relatively recently, outstanding geology, contiguous diamond bearing kibnites and very attractive diamonds. There is the opportunity for some unique stones in the future, very large white stones, definitely yellows and possibly pinks. Um, attractive economics, um, $2 billion dollar NPV and 19% uh, IRR in a base case with a 3.4 year payback. Uh, low risk jurisdiction in central Saskatchewan. Uh, as I've mentioned already, near existing uh, power and transport infrastructure. The revised mineral resource incorporating the trench cutter data will add strength to the project. And then we have to up, uh, provide an updated feasibility study ultimately to obtain a mining lease and get the go ahead to move forward. In preparation for this, we have recently registered the Kuwaitan diamond brand, which will be hopefully become famous and well known for diamonds from central Saskatchewan from any of the Fort Alacorn. Kimberlites. I think you and might have some additional comments on the Kuwaitan brand. Sure. Um, thanks, George. We had a, a great contest, which we had over a thousand suggestions of the brand name, and that was selected because of its meaning, uh, which is really the North Wind. I also wanted to add that, uh, you know, I've had a couple of calls in the last few days. Why do you guys keep trotting out this $2 billion value, 19% IRR with three and a half year payback? We keep doing it because that's all we really can do. There are quite a few regulations with respect to what you can say. Uh, but what I can tell you is, uh, you know, based on the March 2022 Joint Venture uh, Committee meeting we had with Rio, they were outlining an 84-year mine life. 
Uh, so once you get past 15 or 20 years in discounted cash flow, it doesn't really matter anyways. But make no mistake, this is the largest undeveloped high purity diamond project on earth. Thank you. There we have our people. And I, I don't know if there's any further comments, Ewan. No, uh, we're, we, we'll be adding people. In fact, we had someone show up last week to start with uh, new diamond parcel modeling, and we're off to the races. Any questions? Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks very much for the presentation. Uh, so before we get into questions from the audience, there's one question that came in over email. And I think you tackled it uh, towards the beginning of the presentation, but always worth reiterating. Uh, somebody asked what the road to the PFS looks like from here, uh, both uh, in timeline and what the major roadblocks you might have to overcome are. Uh, initially is uh, financing. We we mostly know what we have to do. We have to do the sc a scoping study early in the 2024 to lay out a roadmap for the PFS. Uh, but I believe that, that we, we have a lot of experience. We have known people that can work for us, that can pick up where they've left off in the past. Um, certainly, we have a vast experience in this, and we will proceed down that road as quickly as possible. We want to be inventive and innovative, um, reducing costs. Um, one of the areas where there can be a lot of money expended is in developing the open pits. We already know that uh, bucket wheel excavators provide a very efficient method of and, and cost efficient method of removing the overburden. Obviously, if there are methods to steepen the walls of the pits, the pits will go down uh, 350 meters below surface, ultimately to, to once all of the kimberlite is mined. If we can steepen our spit, pit walls by one or two or three degrees, we save a lot of money. And if there's some money to be spent in steepening the pit walls, we must look at that. It is a, a, it is a project on which we need to spend some time and make sure that it works efficiently in the future for a future mine. Um, in terms of the timeline, we believe we can get the, a lot of the PFS work done uh, early in 2025 and roll that over into a uh, feasibility study and update the degree of confidence. A PFS has a 25% confidence, an FS has 15% confidence, and then ultimately every nut and bolt that goes to make up the mine needs to be costed and assembled. We have a lot of experience again from that in that from the past and we can update that work i think it's worth mentioning um, george that uh part of the part of the the reason that we're so bullish right now is the work that real good i mean the whole time we were uh, you know in discussions about how we're going to go forward they were doing work and there's a tremendous amount of work that they have done and basically they have validated all of our assumptions from our previous uh pea and and pre-feasibility and that gives us a great amount of confidence. Um, you know, most importantly was the pit slope angle that George mentioned. That was something that was a, a, a bit of a, a trip over earlier on, say 2016, 2017. Well, they validated that with three separate engineering companies. So we're not starting from zero. We're kind of starting from halfway. And we'll be using these same firms to do this work. And so that's why we can be confident uh, that the completion date of a feasibility study is much reduced compared to what it would have been had we not had this validation by uh, Rio's technical people. Appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, now jumping into the live questions from the chat. Um, this is a combination of a couple, but uh, initially Brent asked, when do you anticipate the closing of the Rio transaction? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, George has got more oversight on that because what's going on right now is a tremendous back and forth on the technical side. So, George, why don't you uh, get into Just, that one? There, there are three perhaps critical elements, uh, the easiest of which is the mineral dispositions or the claims. That transition happens basically in a day. It's very easy. 
But in order to proceed with that, we have to transfer the permission to operate, which is legislated by the Ministry of Environment in Saskatchewan, and that must move from Rio Tinto to Star Diamond Corporation. Um, there are a, a, a couple of things that have to be done to get the Ministry of Environment's approval for that uh, permission to operate to change hands. And certainly we are very actively working on that. We have a very good understanding of what needs to be done. We just make, need to make sure that it is done in the quickest possible way. Um, and then, so there's, and then there are there are mining leases, or there's leased land, not mining leases, leased land, that uh, eight areas of leased land, and there has to be uh, land that land has to change hands again between uh, Rio Tinto and Star Diamond Corporation, and we've done a lot of homework on that, and we believe it can happen quickly. We have certainly had undertakings from the Ministry of uh, Energy and Resources and the Ministry of Environment that they will assist us in making this happen. I appreciate that. Uh, Doug asks, has Rio retained any side claims? And then he specifies the Birch Bark Lake area. Just say that again. Uh, Doug asked if Rio retained any side claims, specifically the Birch Bark Lake area. Not to my knowledge, they, they they may have some claims still in their name. There were some claims that were not part of the of the joint venture, but those claims uh, may have lapsed. If they haven't lapsed, we are not interested in them. Okay, thanks. Uh, Lowell asks, is it possible to accelerate the proposed work to less than two years? Uh, Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> if we if we if we overpromise and underdeliver, our shareholders will be very upset with us. <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. Um, Hartmut asks, which indigenous communities is Star Diamond engaged with to this point? I uh, really can't comment on that right now for some very obvious reasons, but uh, needless to say, it's it's a very important piece of the puzzle as we go forward. And, you know, I've had a few calls with people the last couple of weeks saying, well, why would you do that? And I go, well, because even though it's not their land, it's their spiritual lands, it's their ancestral hunting grounds. And, you know, we would like them as partners going forward. I think it's very central to a mega project development in the, in the energy and resources sector in Canada to have your indigenous uh, partners involved in this. And like I've said many times, uh, we just don't want employees we want partners, we want owners, and I think this is the best way to go forward. Great, thank you. Uh, 604 Paul asks, at what point does the status of STAR change so that the diamonds, which are now property of the government, become yours to sell? Um, I'll let George answer that because I've been all over this the, <laughs> the last month. In order to sell the diamonds, we have to be, uh, we have to, reach a stage in the project development where the um, Ministry of Energy and Resources of Saskatchewan gives us a mining lease. And that's when it will change. But there are a number of hurdles to jump over before that. We have to prove through a feasibility study that we have an economic project and we also have to have financing in place to develop that project. So really, it, until the, the, we're at the starting line, we, we are not at liberty to sell the diamonds. And That's, there are a lot of diamonds, right? Yeah, George, over 160,000 have been extracted, as I understand it. They're all stuck in a bank vault somewhere. Correct, yeah, no. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, Shu asks, how much useful info will come from Rio at the close of escrow? I believe we've got it all. We, uh, we have we have the information already. But I, I would say, though, that uh, our agreement with Rio um, basically underlines that anything that we say in the interim period between the announcement of the transaction and closing has to be approved by them, which is only fair because we don't own it yet. So mm -hmm. we haven't been able to release uh, most of that, including this, uh, you know, this uh, 
olivine sequestration study. Uh, these are things we are going to release as soon as we get this quote. Great, thanks. Um, Eve is looking for a bit of clarity on the financing. He asks, uh, the funding is at nine cents and flow through at 11 cents, but he's curious because he thinks it was published at 14 cents a share. So he's just looking at some clarity for the numbers. No, uh, the, the, the financing is a unit financing, both hard dollars and flow through. And the warrant price that's exercisable at over a three year period is 14 cents. Correct. Great. Which is a great deal, by the way. Uh, <laughs> hell of a deal. I bought a bunch myself. Uh, Reinhardt asks, if we talk to James Smith in regards to their TLE funds and get them involved as a paid partner? Um, you know, obviously, um, they, they are the closest group uh, to the project. And um, I, I can't really say anything about the discussions we've had to date uh, for a couple of good reasons. Number one, they're confidential. But number two, we don't own the project yet. And I've said to many people over the last year, we're not in the business of bidding against ourselves. Uh, once we get everything lined up, you won't be able to shut us up. But uh, we have to be very careful here because I don't want someone walking in and snapping this world-class asset office for nothing. Uh, so we're not going to say too much about any of that stuff uh, until we have it uh, in our own backyard, 100%. Great. Uh, Mark Galambos asks, this is a, I'm going to combine a couple of questions into this one. He's really asking about the share price. Um, he's curious what next or what catalyst is most likely to move the share price in the future. Well, I, I think we've got a, we've got a parcel together, uh, the project deal going forward. Uh, we have to bring First Nations uh, on board. We have to bring uh, financial partners on board and we have to bring the government on board. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's, that's what's going to make a difference here. I don't think anybody is any doubt what we have in the ground. Uh, what's, what's in the ground, you know, has, has been in this deposit for over 100 million years and probably around for 4 billion years. It's not going anywhere. What we need to do is join the dots and get everybody on side for developing this massive project. And, and you know, I, I think people have to realize we've been out of the box on this since 2017, okay? Um, you know, and a, a year before that, we were working on the deal with Rio. So, we have not been in a position to make any any uh, any decisions or do any development work ourselves, and in fact, even look for investors uh, because it, we were not the manager of the joint venture. Uh, all that is going to change now, and we are going to do things very differently. Um, you know, there's a <laughs> there's a lot of phone calls that are going to be made and meetings um, attended because we're not we're not stopping anywhere. We're looking for uh, project partners anywhere we can find them, and I think. You know, the financial end of this business, particularly with what's going on now uh, with the recent uh, banning of Russian diamonds. I don't know, I don't know if people know this, but uh, back in early December, um, the whole G7 decided they're not taking any Russian diamonds anymore. So, you know, this deposit is actually quite remarkable in that it's in a mining friendly jurisdiction. All right. It's very, very high purity with uh, lots of great big stones under there. And. Uh, above all else, it's conflict-free. Um, mm -hmm. Just so simple. No, well, thanks. Uh, there's one question. Uh, is there a chance to rent out the processing plant or Bauer to make money while they sit idle? Yeah, these are all possibilities. And, uh, you know, uh, we, may, we may even use the processing plant to run um, Kimberlite from other deposits. These are all things we'll figure out once we own it. Great, thank you. Um, Sean asks, when do you think, and I know this is some crystal ball gazing here, but when do you think mining can actually start at the project? I mean, there's there's a couple of different types of mining. There's legal mining and illegal mining. So I think we'll just stick with the legal one. And George, that'll be over to you. It'll 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 take a while because you you have to you have to get through uh, a feasibility study and have a financeable project. So uh, a very minimum of, of three years, I would think. Ewan, I don't know if you want to add to that. Well, um, certainly well, once, it, once it gets going, you have to strip the overburden to get at the kimberlite. Unless you come up with an alternative mining method, we're not really familiar with that stage at the moment. You need to get at the at the rock that contains the diamonds, which is essentially 100 meters below surface. 
and you need to extract it in large volumes to create a good cash flow from it. And there were many different uh, types of mining uh, that were analyzed by uh, Rio in the, in the, in, under the auspices of the joint venture, including uh, mining with the trench cutter or shaft mining. Um, you know, our, our staff has discounted most of these things, as did Rio, uh, as not being the way to get the big deposit. Uh, but these are all possibilities, and this can be done very quickly. In fact, Rio was planning on going right ahead. Uh, they weren't going to sit around and wait. So um, it just depends on who's actually doing the mining. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. A uh, couple questions from Marty. I, I think to some degree have been uh, covered, but uh, always good to reiterate. He asked what work needs to be done and how it will take to put out a resource estimate on Orion North. Uh, there would need to be some additional um, bulk sampling done that could be done with a trench cutter rig. Um, there has been some in the past, uh, large diameter drilling that was done uh, successfully in the past and has shown these results that we've that I've spoken about in this presentation. Um, we have a very the the core drilling is is good on Iran South, but there would need to be additional bulk sampling to get a more accurate diamond grade and a diamond price. We are very far off on a price yet. We have not done a price estimate on Orion North. We may attempt that uh, because of our local pricing person who will be on site in the future. That is a, certainly a possibility, but um, we there, there is huge opportunity with the Rhine North. Certainly in the past, um, when Newmont was involved in the project a very long time ago, they were very gung-ho about the Rhine North because of the extreme ore volume. They were deterred by the grade, but I fully believe that the abundance of type twos and the coarse size frequently, frequency distribution of the diamonds vastly offsets the grade. We know of other bodies, particularly let's say in South Africa, which has a grade of one to two carats per hundred tons, and yet it is a highly economic deposit because it has $2,000 per carat diamonds on average. And then there are obviously stones such as the Lesotho Promise that went up to like $40,000 a carat, you know, really remarkable stones. There is the possibility for that scenario on Orion North and Orion and, and Star. Well, uh, actually, Georgia, uh, that's a good comment. Uh, and I will say right now, as I've mentioned many times, we haven't done much with Orion North. Orion North scares me. It's massive. It has, you know, over 50% type in typing diamonds, type 2A. Uh, it really is something that's, you know, it's very unique. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only reason we're not working on it right now is because we're almost there on Orion South and Star. Uh, but, you know, don't forget, Orion North is there and is likely the, you know, the, the, the singular jewel of this project. It's likely going to be what makes this work. And that's what gets us to 84-year mine life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder, we'll try to get to all the questions today. But if we do run out of time, make sure that the team gets the full list of questions and can reach out with any answers. Or if you're like me and you think of the perfect question as soon as the event is over, uh, please feel free to email in and I'll make sure the team gets back to you. Uh, but a couple more I wanted to get through. Um, Eve asks, are you aware if Newmont may have an interest in coming back as a bigger player? Um you know, we are required under the agreement that we, we made with Newman back, and I think it was 2017, uh, to advise them of any financing we do, and they will they have the chance to participate. Uh, we have not talked to Newmont on a strategic basis, uh, go forward basis yet. Newmont is a far different company than it was when they were involved with us. It's probably three or four times the size now. And um, so we will have a discussion with them. I just don't know where it would go. Well, fair enough. Uh, Marty asked how much work was done over the past year on the PFS and if this is factored into your current timeline. 
Uh, they, we, we've certainly done work in terms of uh, understanding the relationship between Star and Orion South in terms of their diamond population. We worked as hard as we could on that, but certainly when it comes to engineering work, we did not have the money to proceed down that route. We have a lot of information from the past that merely needs to be refined and updated. So as Ewan has already stated, we have a lot there already, and we just need to sharpen our pencil, as it were. So there, there is a lot of work done already, yes. Great, thanks. Uh, Brett asks, this is directly to George, uh, do you know how many KWH it would take to produce a one carat stone in a lab and how that compares to mined diamonds? Uh, I can't um, give you actual numbers, but I know uh, a certain person who was uh, very eminent in the diamond business when he left a project, he had an, a great idea of producing uh, uh, synthetic diamonds from solar power generated in the southern Arizona, which obviously receives a lot of sunshine. And uh, having investigated that in some detail, it was put to bed because it was not viable. So I am of the opinion, and I don't have actual engineering numbers at my fingertips, but I am of the opinion that it is uh, is it is electrically expensive to make a synthetic diamond. So to call synthetic diamonds green is a complete uh, false statement. But the, the difference between synthetics and natural diamonds is in the price. So synthetic diamonds are cheaper and natural diamonds have the uniqueness of their deep two, three, four billion year history and, and their rarity. But uh, you have to make up your mind what you want. Well, thanks, George. Uh, Jared asks, when will we hear about carbon neutral mining process with the ore coming to surface, making this a carbon neutral diamond mine? Well, we, we have uh, Rio's report on it and um, we, are, we have made some uh, subsequent inquiries about it, but we're expecting to announce uh, in the new year, uh, what we're going to do with that initiative going forward, correct, George? Correct, yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, Kevin asks us a question about the financing. So without the deal having closed, are you able to spend the money um, on the project at this time or only once the deal closes? And if it's the latter, uh, what is the deal closing risk? Uh, well, our council has advised that we're able to raise money and spend money in the intervening period. Uh, I would say there's almost zero risk of this deal not closing because both parties want it very badly. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thanks. Um, Schreinhardt asks, can we hire more people to speed up the FS? He thinks most shareholders would ante up money for wages to make this process go quicker, if that's an option. Well, that's what we're doing. Um, George? We, we want to get moving with this small financing, obviously, if you're going to go in deep and raise significant money to do a significant piece of engineering work, we have to do that with hard dollars. We can't do that with flow through funds. Um, we would also like to raise that money at a more significant share price. That makes sense. Sure. Uh, Rock asks, what are you going to do with the 100 plus meters of overburden? He notes that it sounds like a lot of earth. It would there would be a um, an overburden pile built that would be essentially the, and we must understand that there is already some undulation in the forest of the Fortala corn because when the the glaciers receded seven thousand years ago there was a field of glacial outwash sands that then were blown around by the wind and created a dune field. And we would have a pile that is large in its aerial extent, and it, but it is of a low profile, and it would be ultimately vegetated by the same material, the same vegetation as we have in the forest. So 
it, it, it wouldn't be an eyesore as those of you who've gone to Johannesburg in, in the not so distant past, there were these enormous mine dumps all over the show that ultimately got reprocessed because they were mined with inefficient metallurgy long ago. But certainly um, the, the overburdened waste pile would, would not be an eyesore. Great, and, and ultimately with mining Orion South first, you would build an overburdened waste pile. But once you then start the pit on star, ultimately you can put waste back into Orion South. Great, thanks. Into the, into the, the worked out pit of Orion South. So the, 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 the materials can ultimately be recycled. Time for just a couple more questions. So I'll try to get to uh, some of the ones here that have been recently asked. Uh, Marty asks, uh, just one last time, if you could repeat the PFS timelines. Uh, well, we've we've the picture says that uh, second quarter of uh, 2025. Great, thank you. Uh, Aaron asks, with this financing, will the shares be sitting with Odyssey like the recent, most recent financing? Uh, that, the pair, uh, that depends which shares you're talking about. Um, uh, the shares will be sitting with the purchasers um, and only the purchasers. Okay, thanks. Um, Brent asks, you and do you anticipate any institutional involvement in this financing? Uh, yes, we already have. We have a lead order from an institution. Great, thanks so much. Uh, now, I know there's a couple of questions left in chat, but uh, unfortunately we'll have to get to those over email. I wanted to pose to you guys just before we wrap, uh, what each of you are most excited for in 2024 now that we're getting to the end of December. Well, for, for, for me, uh, it's the ability uh, to control the deposit for the first time in a very long time. And as I mentioned earlier, we've never owned 100% of it. Um, and our, our hands have been tied basically by the partnership, which one would expect. Uh, now that it's over, uh, there is no stone going to be left unturned. This is far too great an asset to not be developed, not, not just for the people uh, of Saskatchewan and Canada, but for the global diamond market. I, I firmly believe that nothing like this has ever been seen. And <clears throat> somebody asked what we're going to do with the overburden. Well, George mentioned we're going to plop some back in the Ryan South pit. That's where the Ryan North overburden is going to go when we mine that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, George, last words on what you're most excited for in 2020. From my side, um, certainly there was always a concern about this mitigation of the price risk on, on Ryan South. And I think the work that we are currently doing is pointing in the right direction that we will be able to solve that problem we will be able to improve our uh, revised mineral resource and strengthen those numbers. And I think that that is a short-term achievement in the second quarter of 2024. Great. You and George, thank you so much for your presentation and going through the Q&A today. Uh, thanks, to everybody who joined, particularly those who asked questions during the very uh, engaged question and answer period. Um, if you're looking for the recording of this, it should be available towards the end of today, both on YouTube and also on six.com. Uh, but thanks everybody for joining, uh, George, Yun, thank you guys as well. Happy holidays. I'll throw it to you guys for the last word before we jump. Yeah. Thanks everybody for uh, your interest. And, uh, don't forget about the financing. We have some room left for existing shareholders. So please, if you're interested, uh, send us your indication as per the press release. And I just want to wish you all the very best and safest of the holiday season. Thank you.